Welcome back to the Raw Code Academy. I'm your host, David Flanagan, also known across the internet as Raw Code. Today, we're going to take a look at how to make troubleshooting your microservice life all a little bit easier. And let's face it, this is something we all need. Microservices are difficult. Whether you're adopting a monorepository, building out completely new CI CD pipelines, or trying to observe, understand, and react to problems within your production infrastructure across your new plethora of microservices, you're constantly facing challenge after challenge after challenge. So it's nice when a tool can come along and make some of these challenges disappear. And Lumigo is the perfect tool to come in and make distributed tracing and observability almost child's play. Let's take a look. So on a surface level, Lumigo is a distributed tracing tool. But when you go deeper, it surfaces so much more. But let's start at the top. Do we need another distributed tracing tool? Well, yes. Lumigo works and supports open telemetry. It also supports zero touch automatic instrumentation of your services. That means you can deploy Lumigo to your cluster, like I'm about to do now, and you will get distributed tracing without changing a single line of code. As we explore the Lumigo dashboard, you'll start to see and understand that it is much more than automatic instrumentation. It gives you the ability to browse and understand these distributed traces in a way that reveals much more information than I've seen from other tools, allowing you to introspect the entire request object, view service maps, and a whole bunch more. I've said enough. Let's deploy Lumigo to our cluster. All right, let's log in to Lumigo. I've already signed up for an account. But it just takes a second you can set up with a username and password or like I used my Google authentication. I've already explored Lumigo in preparation for this video so what I'm going to do is create a new project and I'll call this one the actual demo because I have many other similar names. Once this project is created we get instructions to deploy Lumigo to our infrastructure. Lumigo doesn't just support Kubernetes, although that is going to be the focus of my video today. It also works with ECS and AWS Lambda. We're going to click on Kubernetes and use the Helm operator, or at least we're going to use Helm to deploy the Lumigo operator to get the automagic instrumentation. From here, we can start to copy repository add commands followed by Helm install, which just wants our cluster name which can be anything that we wish to call it. And then we need the ability to create a secret inside of a namespace so that the operator can consume it and write to our Lumigo instance. So let's start with step one, deploying the operator with Helm. Let's jump over to our terminal and I'll pop open VS Code to give us an empty buffer. Instead of changing these commands together, we're just going to split them up. And I like to format them in a way that they make sense when I look back at them later. So step one, let's add the repository, like so. I have already done this, so it's already there. Next, we're going to do a Helm install. And we'll install it to the default namespace of Lumigo system, which is a very weird sentence now that I think about it. If this namespace doesn't exist, we're going to create it. And I'm going to call this cluster Docker Desktop because I'm using Docker for Mac for this Kubernetes cluster. We can copy the installation command and paste to our terminal. Easy. Next, we want to create a secret with our token. So now to create a secret, we need to specify the namespace. And this is going to be the namespace where your application is running. So I'm just going to call this app 
and will call the secret Lumigo credentials like suggested from a literal value. And this is my real Lumigo token. Hopefully it won't exist by the time you see this video. We can jump back to the terminal where we can do cube control, create namespace, app, followed by our secret creation. If we run cube control, get secrets, and our app namespace, we'll see it now exists. Lastly, we copy the code to configure our namespace for Lumigo. Simple. Okay, let's deploy our sample application. We're using the open telemetry demo application, which comes with a single manifest for deploying to a Kubernetes cluster. I have updated said manifest to deploy to the app namespace like we configured when we deployed Lumigo to the cluster. We can now run kubectl n app get pods. Now this may take a couple of moments, so by the power of magic, let's come back. Gotta love magic. Now all of our demo services are running on our Kubernetes cluster in a namespace configured with Lumigo. So I think now would be a good time to jump back to our Lumigo dashboard. So let's validate our installation. Awesome. All right, so let's give Lumigo a little bit of data to work with. Let's run a port forward to the front end proxy, which runs or makes our application available on localhost port 8080. From here, we can see the open telemetry demo application. Let's go shopping for some binoculars. And a lens cleaning kit. Now we place our order like so. Let's jump back to the Amigo and see what we can see. It now tells us our application is sending traces to Lumigo. We're currently on the live tail page and we can see these requests streaming in in real time. I'd like to start off by taking a look at the system map. Here we have a visual representation of all of the services within our cluster, or at least the ones that have ambient traffic running through it or we hit through clicking around on the shopping page. We can see the payment service, the ad service, the cart service, currency service, front end, feature flags, and so forth. We can see that it speaks to a Redis, it's using port 443, and this, I believe, is our device. So let's go to the dashboard. And now we can see, because this application has only been running for a few minutes, we got a couple of failures, some requests, and some information on the duration of these functions or these services. We can actually see the P99 and P95 of these services based on the limited information that we have thus far. So now let's pop over to transactions. From here, we can begin to understand the requests within our application. We can see on this one request, we started off at the front end. It made a request to the cart service, which spoke to Redis, and that the cart service is written in a .NET language. Our front end is in JavaScript, and well, Redis is Redis. We can click on our front end, and we can now start to get more information about this service. We can see the route that it came in on here. It's a, when we requested the cart and it tells us the currency with GBP. We see all the environment variables configured on our pod. And if we scroll down, we can start to see the span information. It gives us the start and end time as well as all the attributes that are important. We get to see the information on the URL, which we already kind of knew, but now we can see the host name that was used. We see the protocol, we can see the browser, all the stuff you would expect to see from a trace within a microservice architecture. Now this view is great for debugging 
because we can see the services that were involved. We can see information about the pod and the span. And then we can click on these requests themselves, where we can see here that a push request was made to the cart service on this path, get cart. If we click on Redis, we can actually see the request or the query that was sent to Redis too. The statement was a get request for a UUID. If we pop over to this side, we can see that this was actually a request to add item. And if we pop down to these Redis, we'll see that we actually have a set of a UUID. So this transaction from a single request ID propagated through the system was actually what happened when we added something to the cart. It also fetched an update and returned it to our client. Now, this is great. We can understand a whole bunch of information about the system. But sometimes it's nice to have the classic distributed tracing view. The timeline. So now we can take a look at this transaction as it happened in a linear progression. We can see here that the front end is responsible for pretty much everything. We already knew that. We have our cart service, which speaks to Redis. We can see that the first request to Redis was the add item call, which made actually multiple calls to Redis. And now that we can see the order these requests happened in, we can click on it. All right, there was a get, followed by a set, followed by an expire. Nice. Once it added item to the cart, the cart service then made one more request to Redis. This time the get request. Now we get to understand how over time the requests propagated through our system. So let's take a look at something else. Down here, we have some request that took almost five seconds. So let's take a look at it. This request goes through a whole bunch more services. We can see here and here and here. We've got a whole bunch of gRPC and a whole bunch of Kubernetes services. Let's take a look at the timeline. We can see that this is, is the front end speaking to a recommendation service. When we viewed a product, it wanted to show us more that were just like it. This requires a whole bunch of gRPC calls. The first one to get a list of recommendations followed by subsequent requests to get the product information. Eventually, this is all returned and it even requires a lookup to the feature flag service. We can click on the feature flag service and we can see it was trying to understand if a feature flag is enabled. The product catalog failure. In this case, it was false, so we didn't get an error. And right away, we're seeing the core value of a tool like Lumigo. You don't need to understand an application as a whole at a macro level when it is built of lots of smaller microservices. We could focus on just the debugging and observability, and we are going to dive into looking at how that works with Lumigo. But as an ability to onboard new people to your team, instrumentation is key. Much like testing is invaluable for learning how code should work, good observability tools can reveal the same on an architecture level, and not just an architecture level. Here we can see that we have feature flags, we have Redis, we're using gRPC, we have all of these services working together and we have a good understanding of how that happens. So thank you, Lumigo. Now, let's go back to debugging, one of my favorite topics. So I've jumped over to the live tail page so we can see things in real time. Let's jump back to our demo application, go shopping and add something to our car. Right now we have three items, it's not really that important. This application has a cool edge case where whenever you change the credit card number, it will cause an error. 
we will hit place order and jump back to our live tail. Now we can see all of the requests that were happening behind the scenes as we added to the car and browsed around the website. And now we can see some checkout failures. So let's pause the live tail. And I click checkout a bunch of times so we can see them coming in over and over. But we're here, we can see that we tried to check out, check out, check out. These failures are because I changed that number. So let's take a look at one. And now we have issues. These can also be discovered via the issues page. And even on the dashboard, we can see an occurrence of the issues here. So we go back to issues. And now we can see here we have failed to charge card. So let's click on that and take a look. Now we get an overview of what went wrong during this transaction. We can see the front end tried to place an order over gRPC with the checkout service. And we can see the actual error message or the exception thrown by the application. We can see here that it failed to charge the card and that's because the card number didn't work. And just to show you that this definitely does work, let's change it back to the correct number and it works. So we get more information as things happen, even when they are exceptions with this integration of logs right next to the trace. Now there are some really nice value add features here too. One, I can assign this to somebody. I can create a JIRA ticket if I have it integrated. And if we know about this issue, maybe we want to mute it for a few days while we work on a fix. Now, there are a ton more features we could take a look at in the Migo, but we want to keep this video short and sweet. But before we go, let's click on Kubernetes. Here we get a good visual representation of our Kubernetes cluster. We can see all of the workloads deployed, the cluster name, the kind, namespace, when they were modified, any issues that are relevant or have happened in the last span of one hour, because that is what we have the window set to. If we click on one of the workloads, we can see the Kubernetes events from deleting pods, scaling replica sets, and even creating the deployments and so forth as well as any application issues at the bottom. We have a very nice visual representation of that timeline too. Let's go back and click on our front end service. As well as the visual thing, the list, we have the application issues at the bottom too. So we can understand how our services are behaving on a per service basis also. The last thing I want to show you before we wrap this up is Explore. One of my favorite features, but would require much more time to go into in depth. Here we can filter by service. If we just want to see Redis issues, we can take a look at Redis. Here we can see all the requests propagated through the system. If we want to take a look at Kubernetes clusters or Lambda functions or any of the other supported resources, these are filterable here too. Now, let's say that we just want to take a look at our app namespace. Well, we can do that too. Now we have all of our services and we can drill down even further. What if we want to take a look at one single endpoint? Well, let's take a look at that checkout endpoint. Here we can see the request and the results. Quite a lot of failures. Whoops. What if we just want to filter by long requests? What about anything that takes more than four seconds? Well, we can do that too. And you can see that we are actually joining these filters together with and statements. We could also use not. The ability to query and understand the traces across your system is up to you. Lumigo is such a cool tool. And here is the good news. Lumigo has a free tier. They don't charge you per seat or user. You can have unlimited users on the free plan, but you will be restricted to 150,000 traces per month. 
And even if you do need more traces, up to a million is only a hundred bucks a month. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed this quick demo of Lumigo. Go check out their website at lumigo.io. And don't forget, tell them the rock code sent you. Thank you for your time. Have an awesome day.